So we just left off here. Um, I was just about to type log when we got cut off. So this is logarithmic right here um, because you can tell it's going up by multiples of 2, so 1,000 to 2,000 to 4,000 and so on. All right. Now, is logarithmic scale appropriate for this data? Absolutely yes, because income has such a wide range. I mean, we have some countries that are literally making just over $400 per person per year. Very, very poor countries. And then we have Qatar over here, which is like 70 some thousand, right? And all the countries in between. And remember, we said back here, you use logarithmic scale for two things. One, when you have a very wide range of your data, right, from very low numbers to very high numbers, right? And two, when your data is tightly packed. And sometimes when it's both, because those things can often go, go together, wide range and tightly packed. Okay, so yes, it's very appropriate in this instance, as it often is with income or other um, demographic things like that, to use a logarithmic scale to get a better picture of what's happening. And I just wanted to remind you all, I have the tiny URL right here. You can control and click to follow it, or you can just type it that in, copy and paste it, whatever. And I have it, oopsie, up here. Well, that's my YouTube. There it is. And this will be a little bit better for you. We're going to keep using Gapminder through Chapter 4 and probably for some later chapters as well because it's just a treasure trove of information. There's so much good stuff up here. Um, but right now we're just learning how to read these graphs. So you can see right down here it says logarithmic. Um, you can see, hey, you can let your mouse hover over things like this yellow dot right here, that's the U.S. So in 2009, the average income was 41,256 for the U.S. And you can see we're one of the wealthiest nations in the world. Okay. Let me go back here. So that was the next question. So um, my computer ate my video again. So sorry about this. But the colors show us the different regions of the globe. So let's go back and look at it. So you can see blue. Matter of fact, I'm going to let my, my cursor hover over the blue. See? And then all the sub-Saharan African countries blink. Or let me go to the yellow. Then all the American countries blink. South America, North America, all that stuff. Okay? Asia is right there in the orange. Well, actually, East Europe and Central Asia and then East Asia and the Pacific are there. Okay? So, and the, little, the light blue is India and the subcontinent right there like Bangladesh and stuff. Okay, so it's saying, you know, what were the countries revealing? So that's what the countries reveal. The dots are not all the same size. All right, now Gapminder has this feature over here that it makes different dots different sizes. And you have choices. You can pick different things to use. But this graph came to us built like this. So what is it saying it is? And it says it right here. It's the total number of people that, it, excuse me, of persons in all ages that are estimated to be infected by HIV, including those without symptoms, those sick from AIDS, and those healthy due to treatment of HIV infection. So in other words, it's the number of people in your country that are living with HIV. That is not always the case in every graph. That's just the case in this graph. So think about what that means. That means that the bigger the dot is, the more people are living with HIV in your country. So let me hover over the biggest dot out there, South Africa. So if you look at South Africa, it tells you that the average income was $9,141. That's on the bottom axis right there. So, right. And then it tells you that the um, adults living with HIV is about 18%. And then over in the bottom right corner, it tells you that, that in South Africa in 2009, roughly 5.6 million, that's why it's a capital M, 5.6 million people were living with HIV. It tells you right down here when I let the mouse hover. See that? Okay. The U.S., by example, had 1.2 million people living with HIV in 2009, okay, which represented only 0.6% of our population. All right, so let me go back here. So the size, oopsie, let me type this up, hold on. All right, so the size of the dot is how many people are infected with HIV. That's what this is basically telling us. The bigger the dot, the more people there are that are infected in that country. All right, next is describe the relationship that appears to exist. Oh, we'll finish this up in the next one, but realize that even though there's no statistical relation, there's some major things going on in the world, and this graph shows that to us. I'll see you back here for that.